so the first and foremost thing is nothing but uh, let us try to understand uh, how to pull the images right so as i told you if you, if you want to create a container the container can be anything a base container or web application container or mysql container so as you know few containers few images are already built okay and it is available in the docker hub registry so if if i want to deploy a uh, mysql container and uh, if i want to deploy mysql on my docker host so i can use a mysql image so you can search for that and it is an official image you can see here it's an official image which is downloaded by mysql community itself okay so there are some tags which you can see like official mariadb okay uh, percona uh, php mysql so these are official images okay and this verified publisher in the sense the image which is developed has been verified by your docker docker hub and it is approved it is called as verified publisher if you don't see any tag it is a third party it is up to your risk whether to use that image or not okay so the main uh, the first intention is to use official image if not verified publisher if not the last one is nothing so the, if there is no tag it is up to you whether to use it or not okay always you have to prefer official image okay and it is verified published everything is done by docker itself verified publisher in the sense uh, the actual committee has developed it and it is it is it is verified by your docker that's it okay and the another one is the thing but the free ones like the third party ones okay it's up to you so now always we do prefer official images and we do the modifications as per our, our organization requirement okay so these are the things which you have to know first of all let us try to download an image and see how to create a container okay so for that you can see first if i have any images on my local system on my local docker host system a docker host machine or docker host did i have any images let's verify so docker image ls now you can see there are no images okay so let me download an image okay so how to download an image let's say i want to download uh, ubuntu okay you can see this is ubuntu let's say for example simple nginx now you can see this is nginx official image okay so let me try to download this so if i need to download open that and you need to give docker pull nginx and you have to remember one more point the important parameter is called as tags so tags in the sense you might have uh, got a question in the mind that every nginx will have some release version right for every version there might be some changes in the uh, nginx packages or the base image what it is using and all there could be some changes for every change they will have a new release new release version that new release version is called as tags okay so by default if you don't give anything it will add a tag called latest so it it looks like this actually in the background if you don't give anything and if you execute docker pull okay and nginx automatically in the background it will add latest as a tag if you don't pass anything but if you want to pass any something let's say i want to download something called uh you can see the tags here actually but you can see here one alpine if you want to download alpine so like this alpine okay and if you want to download something nginx related to 1.21 that is latest one alpine if you want with perl script then you can say it is perl okay so you have to see as per your requirement and you can download it okay um so that is how it is if i don't pass anything see what happens if i execute this you can see using default tag latest okay if you don't pass anything it will use the default tag called latest okay and then you can see it is trying to pull the image from library slash nginx library is nothing but your repository here and then nginx is your image name okay this is how it is it looks like here right you are searching for nginx it's like that okay so i'll tell you what is this these are called as layers image layers okay and you can see it is downloaded and this is the sha okay and this is your download status 
and then this is the official location where your image has been downloaded docker.io slash library slash nginx dot latest okay this is how it is now if you if you verify whether it is downloaded to your local system or not you can see now it's downloaded you can see here nginx is the repository like your image latest is a tag and this is your image id for everything it will create a di uh, different id okay so two weeks ago and it is 133 mb the size of this image okay so this is about image okay i have downloaded it so if i want to download another image docker pull uh, nginx sorry not nginx ubuntu let's say i want to download ubuntu 20.04 version okay You can see it is pulling the image, which means that it is available with that tag. Now you can see the image got downloaded. You can see how many layers it has in this image. In this image, it has totally like, for, for example, it's a totally six layers, which you are able to see here. Okay. And here you can see it is only one layer. Okay. So there will be a difference in size. Okay. So Docker image. Let's, you can see the size of Ubuntu. It is 72.8 MB. Imagine how it is. Half of it. Okay. It is 133 MB. How the size get increased will get increased. Okay. How to reduce the size of the images and all. When we are developing the images and all, we will see in the practical session. But let's try to use the images which are already exist in the repositories. Okay, we are not uh, creating any images right now. We are using the existing images which are present in the repository. Okay. Now, after downloading the images, now the next task is to create a container. So in order to create a container, we have to refer this image to create a container. So in order to create a container, there are so many commands like we have Docker uh, container run command or we can use create this is one kind of uh, command actually and there is another command called docker run or we can give create so these are all accepted okay these four combinations you can use either docker container run or docker container create docker run or docker create okay this is old style actually this is the old way of creating containers now as per the new changes we have to follow this particular uh, method in order to create a container why because all the container related operations they have moved under container section all the images related things are moved under image okay so for that reason let us follow the latest structure of executing the commands okay so what is the difference between run and create there is a slight difference between run and create a run in the sense it will create a container and it will start the container in the background see if you instead i have shown you one command i executed sleep command and that sleep command i, I executed and i throw that particular command in the background right similarly if you want to create a container and it should be running in the background then you have to give run okay there are certain options which you need to pass i will tell you but if you want to create a container and it should not start right away whenever it is needed i want to start so if you want that kind of scenario you need to go to create okay you want to create a container with whatever the options you want but it should not start immediately whenever i want i want to start that okay so whenever there is a requirement of mine with that container i want to start that then you need to go for docker container create or docker create okay that is one thing so let us see practically what is the major difference between docker container run and docker container create okay now first thing docker container let's get habituated to the latest structure of passing the options docker container run so this if i want to pass this particular if i want to run this container in the background i need to give d hyphen d hyphen d in the sense demon this particular container will be running as a daemon in the background means as a service in the background 
so that is how it is now after this i need to give a name name to this container i want to set some name to this container because if i have more containers i want to know i want to assign some particular name to identify my container so let's say nginx server for example okay after that if you want to set a host name to your container so you now you know what is a name and hosting in virtual machines also we have seen right see this is my host name okay in oracle virtual box if you see a name here it is called as name name of your virtual machine and this is host name to your virtual machine okay with this name i can reach to the virtual machine but this name should be mapped with the ip address that's my uh, secondary part but i can reach to this particular machine not only with the ip address i can reach with this domain name which is called as host name okay so if you want to set a host name like that to my container okay so let's say web server nginx i gave some host name okay apart from that uh, by default this container application will be listening on 80 port number as of now no need to worry okay so now after that at last you need to give the image name so what is your image you want to use to create this container in the next latest so through which container you want to create you have to give that particular image at the end okay so after this execute the command enter now we can see how fast the container has been created within fraction of seconds actually it didn't took much time even uh, some what do you say two seconds also or one second immediately this particular container got created how will you for this container it generated some random number okay so if you want to see whether this container is running or not in the background so docker ps command so this docker ps command will show only running containers you can see container id you can see starting eight characters are matching here okay and then through which image this container is created you can see here what is the command that is running in the background inside the container to to run it okay that is shown here okay and when it is created 27 seconds ago uh, what is uptime so there is a difference between created and status you already know it right so it doesn't mean that the container is created your status is also the same status in the sense what is the current status of your container is it running or stopped that's how it is created in the sense when it is created actually this container so that's how it is which port it is listening 80 by default and then you can see the name of this particular container i gave something like nginx server okay so now i want to see the ip address which is assigned to this particular container so if you recall yesterday's diagram I need to draw once again so my bad let's say this is your docker host machine right see always i say docker host machine in the sense docker installed anywhere on the machine it can be a docker desktop installed on windows docker desktop on mac docker server docker engine server on your linux or unix operating system so docker host okay you can install on virtual machine or a bare metal or in cloud it's up to you so now after this as i told you there is a default bridge network which will be available okay the default bridge is called as docker zero zero right and one end of this particular bridge is connected to your physical interface right of your virtual machine in my case ENP 0 S3 and what is IP address of this interface for me? It's 192.168.0.0.50 which I got it from router Okay, because I'm using bridge and now inside when I install docker So when this uh, like I could see the IP address which was default CIDR is 172.17.0.1 slash 16 This is by default. Okay now I created a container so now this container is created now this container by default if i don't pass anything see i haven't passed anything related to networking so what will happen 
by default my container will connect to this particular bridge docker 0 okay and then uh, ip address will get assigned to this particular container now this is nginx server and it got an ip address for example immediate ip address is 172.17.0.2 as per my expectation for example it might be 3 or 4 whatever it is it depends upon random uh, ip address okay so this is how it looks but let us see practically whether how i got an ip address so docker container if you want to see the ip address container inspect because we are trying to check information related to container right so it should be under container section so inspect and the container name or id let me give container name you can see the ip address which is assigned you can see here as well the ip address is 172.17.0.2 and your gateway is same as your this one okay so i got two now if i try to run ping from this container it has to reach to google.com means it should be able to communicate to the internet first let's verify this okay which means that when i execute this command it will go to this particular bridge bridge it doesn't know what is this google.com so it will send it to the base machine so base machine also doesn't know what is google.com then it will go to the internet internet service provider from there it will search for google.com and then it will go to the root name servers and from there it will identify the google server and then it will respond to that particular request okay so that's how it is that's how the flow is now I will, so i executed this command to check my internet is working on that's it from the container so this is my container that's fine it's running how to log into this container here also we have two commands one is docker exec and the next one is docker attach always i do recommend use docker exec docker attach is not that recommended i will tell you the reason behind that later but think that we have two commands one is docker exec and one is docker attach okay so now if i want to log into this container i want a bash terminal in order to execute some commands right so docker exec hyphen ti okay give the container name so first of all what is ti exec is nothing but execute hyphen t we can write hyphen i like this hyphen t in the sense terminal ty terminal because you need a terminal right to execute some commands okay if you want to execute some commands inside the container you need a terminal that is provided by hyphen t hyphen i in the sense interactive mode interactive which means that after logging into the uh, terminal you need to execute some commands that commands execution is called as interactive okay so you need this hyphen t hyphen i so instead of writing individually we have written in combination hyphen t i okay so this is what i have done either either you can write hyphen i t or t n whatever it is okay now after this i need to give my container name and what terminal you want bash let's say i want to log into the bash terminal you can see it gave me a bash terminal you can see the host name of my container what i gave when i executed the command if you scroll up and if you try to see your container host name when you have created your container you assign some name in the cli not the name host name so to see that actually it's a long data yeah you can see here web server nginx okay now you can see web server nginx is that true so first of all let me execute ping command google.com I don't know whether the ping package is there or not yeah, it is not there obviously expected so you you will see most of the packages not available because this is not required for my nginx application to run <clears throat> so that's the reason it is not installed that's the reason the size of the image is too less okay why because it is not installed if unnecessary packages are installed there might be exposed to vulnerabilities right so that's the reason all the packages will not get installed okay most of the packages will not get installed even network related packages because it is not rated see your application called nginx will never run ping command right in the background that's the reason so 
if you want to install now you can execute the command so whatever the commands you execute or whatever the packages you install or whatever the files you create inside the container will be stored in the container itself container layer itself okay it will not affect your image okay so remember this point whatever the changes you do to the container will be stored in the container layer itself what is that i will talk about that later but remember this critical point whatever the changes you do in the container will be stored in the inside the container layer itself okay that will not affect your image layers okay now i am executing update command you can see it's working fine in order to install the packages first i need to run update command so apt it's since because this nginx is running on debian machines so that's the reason then after i need to install some package install um ip utils hyphen pink it's good let's see the package name is ip utils hyphen ping now if i execute ping google.com you can see i was able to communicate to the internet you can see i got a response i sent four packets i got a response from google.com with four packets response so zero percent packet loss how much time it took eight milliseconds on an average okay so this is how it is so i was able to communicate to the internet okay now i want to check my application is running or not if i execute ip space a command you can see you cannot ip execute ip space a command to see the ip address using if command if config as well that is old command if config but still nothing is available so if i want to execute these commands also i need to install it okay application never requires it actually it's your troubleshooting or if you want something you have to install this additional packages okay by default from the image you are not getting it okay so if i want to install this ip in, uh, apt install um ip route so this command will give me the ip space icon. you can see the ip address by default local host will be there it's by default which i have already told you okay this is how it works now let me exit from here and i want to i already know the ip address of my container right so if i try to if i want to check let's say i cannot go to the browser because it's a private ip address okay if i go to a browser and if i give 172.17.0.2 does my uh, browser understand this no it's a private ip address okay it cannot understand What is private IP address? A private IP address is the IP address only reachable within the LAN, local area network. The IP address which is reachable from anywhere in the geographical location, from anywhere if you try to reach that IP, if it is reachable, that is called as public IP address. Okay. In every class, we have a private and public IP addresses. Okay. If you know which is a private IP address, rest of the IP addresses are public IP address in respective classes. So let me tell you that point which is private uh, what are the private ip addresses in class a b and c you know the range for class a b and c in that range only we have private ip address and public ip addresses so if you scroll down a bit Somewhere I have written. I don't know how I missed it. Did I miss it? Let me check if there is another one. I have written it actually. Huh. So you can see here in class A, this is your range. In that range, few IP addresses belongs to private IP. Okay. So you can say 10.0.0.0, it will start from there and it will end at 10.255.255.255. This is the range where 
the private IP address is false. If you, if you see from anywhere, if you see, you see, go to the browser, try to browse any browser, uh, any domain or anything, try to check their A record, means the IP address, it will be in public IP address only. Okay, that's one thing you have to remember. So private IP address will be reachable only within the switch or within the router. That's it. Okay, so this is your private IP address in class A. If anything which is starting from 10, if, if, whatever you see in class A with a 10, it is a private IP. Simple. Okay, that's the reason your NAT is also private IP. 10.0.2.15. That's how it is. In class B, it is 172.16.0.0. It will start from 0.0, .0 from there and it will end at 172.31.255.255. Okay, it will end at there. After that, it is a public IP address. Before this, it is a private IP address. Okay. In between them, it is a private IP address. Rest of them are public IP addresses. In class C, it is 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.255.255. You already know this private IP, right? You are host only, your router, everybody is using this private IP address of class C. That is a preferred one actually. Because you need only limited number of uh, IP addresses, right? So that's the reason if you increase your class automatically the number of IP addresses will get reduced. Okay, if you go to class A, we can have large number of IP addresses range which we can use. So it all depends upon our requirement. That's the reason still IP IPv4 address is still not completely used. Why? Because we have a private IP addresses and public IP address. What is the smart thing everybody will do? Let's say I have do I have cost con constraint actually. Cost constraint in the sense I have 100 missions in my organization. Okay, I'm a simple organization which I want to start an institute. Okay, for example, I'm saying. So in that institute, I cannot purchase uh, for every system, I cannot purchase a public IP address because that is costly. Let's say for example, I need to spend 500 rupees for each and every system. For internet with public IP address, for example, I'm saying so 100 missions. Obviously, I need to spend around watch how much find it in the sense 100 missions in this is what 50,000 at least, right? So, uh, am I affordable to pay for that 50,000? No, right? So, I cannot do that actually. So, that's the reason what I will do the smart thing I will buy a router, okay? I will buy a router or a switch, whatever it is. So, to that particular router. I will attach the port of from the internet service provider. I purchased only one public IP, but I purchased high bandwidth and high download for that particular network. Okay, I spent instead of 500 rupees, I spent 2000 or 5000, let's say 5000 rupees. Okay, I got one GBPS and unlimited downloads, for example, that is enough for me. So, what I will do, I will attach to the router. From the router, I will take the cables, LAN cables, and I'll attach to the switch. From the switch, I will connect with my systems if it needs LAN cable. Rest of the devices, I will connect through uh, uh, Wi Fi. So, all my 100 systems will get connected. All that systems will get a private IP. They can communicate to the internet. Everything is possible. But they will be accessible only within that particular router or a switch. That's it. Okay. So, this is how we have to plan. So now that's all about your private IP addresses. Now, now you can see I was, I was not able to access. It's a private IP address for, that is the first thing and will not be reachable from outside. But from here, is it possible in the Linux terminal, if you want to verify whether your URL is working or not, we have a command called curl and you can give your, this is something like you run API calls, right? Using curl, something like that. So 172.17.0.2. You can see you got welcome to Nginx, which means that it is working fine and it is successful. So I was able to communicate. See, simple. I ran curl command from the Docker host machine. 0.2, which is possible. Okay, but from here, if I try to run from the browser, from the base machine, technically, 172.17.0.2. 17.0.2 it doesn't work why because it doesn't know where to reach it's a private IP address 
okay now if i want to expose this particular application to the outside let's say developer wants to test in the browser how my website looks because there should be come some css complaints uh, plugins may not work properly so though you are working in cli you cannot check all the things right from few things you have to check only in the browser so there is only chance like i want to use a bridge but i want to expose this particular application to act which should be accessible with my docker host ip address if you remember with the nat i did some port forwarding if you recall what is the intention of that your nat ip address will not allow from base machine to communicate ssh or whatever it is okay so what we did we did a port forwarding where we bind we have binded a port number on your doc, uh, base machine like my windows laptop to my virtual machine on that network so that's how i did some uh, like customization to access my uh, a server using that particular nat ip address so similarly we have to do the same thing so on the docker host machine you will open some port number let's say 8090 or something like that you will bind that particular port number to the container port number that is 80 port number so with that what will happen now no need to give the container ip address directly you can give your docker host machine ip address with 8090 port number automatically it will redirect to that particular container so how this will happen docker proxy will come into picture so docker proxy what it will do it will try to send the packet from 8090 port number to the 80 port number by verifying the ip tables it will verify the ip tables and that's how the docker proxy will send a packet from 8090 port number what are the packets you get on the docker host mission any packet which is reaching on 8090 port number will be redirected to 80 port number inside the container okay so this is how it happens uh, any questions in this in theoretical part so that we can see practical session any questions the zero is the image is it sorry this docker zero is the image is it it's network the bridge interface name okay in this picture there is where is the image where is the docker image nginx uh, server see using that see image you cannot see it right image is present in your system it is downloaded it's not an entity which is created it's not a service or something which will be running in the background so that's the reason with that image i created a container okay image is present in location let's say it is present under var uh, lib okay docker then images under that i have image i downloaded to my local system using docker pull command right docker pull command let's say if i say nginx i just downloaded it once i execute this command this image will be available in this default location using that image when i try to i'm trying to create a container that's what i'm doing okay so what is this docker zero docker docker zero did you attend the yesterday's class yeah i yeah, attended so i have clearly shown that right? so docker zero is something where it's a bridge network okay by default this docker zero bridge network will be created and there are other two networks which will be created what is the intention of it this bridge network will allocate an ip address it acts like a switch okay it will have this particular cidr whenever your container is attached to this particular uh, docker zero bridge network it will assign some ip address to your container from this series okay that is what it does so for this particular bridge network it has assigned some name called docker zero that is by default even if you try to install docker you will see the same docker zero interface okay so have you installed docker no no i did not set up yet so if you understand this if you try to install then you will see your docker zero interface as well that is by default so docker package itself will when you try to install it will create this things which are prerequisites okay by default or they are it's up to you whether to use it or not okay if i don't want to use this i will create another bridge of my own cidr that we can see in the networking part okay but this is by default it is available by default okay 
Okay. Yeah. So now it's working fine. Okay. Now I want to expose this particular container to the outside. One thing you have to remember here, there are few things which can be changed once, once a container is created. There are few things which you cannot change after the container is created. The first thing is nothing but you cannot do a port forwarding. You cannot. Once a container is created, you cannot update your container with that particular details. Okay, you have to delete this and you have to create. So you have to, once you know all the options in the Docker, you have to make a right decision of using the options in order to expose your applications. You have to first think, is that really needed to expose or not? So based on that, you have to make a decision of this port forwarding. Okay. So now I verify it's my lab. I can do how many times I want to recreate. I can do that. Okay. Because it is not impacting my any users or something. Right. So what I can do, first of all, I want to delete this container. So in order to do that, the best practice is first stop the container. Stop. You can see the options over here. Okay. So right now here we need to use stop and then the name. Now your container has been stopped. You are not able to see here because this command will show you only running containers. If you want to see all the containers stopped, running, failed containers and all, you need to give hyphen A, all. Now you can see your containers has been stopped and it is exited with zero. Zero in the sense successful exit. Okay, successfully exited. So now I can delete my container. So docker container remove and then name. Okay. Now your container has been removed successfully. So there is no container created as a means like removed from my docker host machine. It's completely removed. Okay. Your image is there. Image. Nothing I have done with my image. Images are there. Now I want to create a container with a port forwarding. So for that we have to use an option called hyphen P. Okay. Container. Sorry. I can use this shortcut. Yeah. So here I need to give some option called. It's up to you. Wherever you want you can give an option. Hyphen P. I want to bind 8090 port number of the Docker host machine to the container called 80 port number. I know 80 port number because I do some R&D. See, before doing this, you will do some R&D about this image, right? Which port it will listen on this application. Application which port number listens and all. Based on the experience on this particular tool or image, you will come to know it. Okay. But right now, I know that Nginx will be listening or Apache will be listening on 80 port number. Tomcat will be listening on 8080 port number. These are default port numbers. Okay. So I want to bind 8090 port number on my Docker host. On the left hand side is nothing but your Docker host. On the right hand side, after colon, it is nothing but your container port number. Okay. And the image. Now enter. Now you can see container is created. If you see Docker container, Docker. Yes, exit. You can see now. How it looks 0 0 0 0 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 colon 8090 so 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 in the sense any IP address on your docker host machine either local host or this IP address is allowed to access this particular port number if you want to bind to a specific IP address we can do that but by default if you don't pass anything it will bind you to all the IP addresses on your Docker host machine. If you try to use that and 8090 port number, it will communicate to 80 port number inside the container. So now if I take this and if I go to the browser, 192.168.0.50 colon 8090. Now you see, you got welcome to Nginx. Okay. Is this making any sense or got confused? Any questions, please? <laughs> straightforward, actually. So the steps of what I've told, it's straightforward, simple to understand. Okay, so simple. On the Docker host mission, since I cannot access my container IP address since it is a private IP, okay, at least from the browser, if I want to check whether my application is working as per the expectations, 
you can bind your docker host ip address if it is reachable public or a private ip where you can open in the browser on your base machine you can just bind your port number on the docker host to the container called at port number okay this is what we have done right now okay hope there are no questions so let's go forward to the next one okay if you have any questions you can ask me like no problem at all okay yeah so this is how it looks let me try to create another container this is running in the background let it be like that okay now let's create another container using ubuntu okay so docker container run hyphen d i'm not passing anything okay hyphen d uh, let's say name ubuntu server okay host name it's up to you but right now i'm not interested in giving the host name okay even though if you don't give name it will give generate some random name actually docker will generate some random name no port forwarding so you can see container was created now if you verify docker ps command you can see where is my container i see only one container running okay but if i execute hyphen space a command i can see there are two containers see this container is exited with see it is created 16 seconds ago but the status is not it is not up up in the sense the container is running in the background but you can see here it was not running what could be the reason any guess okay first and foremost is if you have terminal any doubt on this sorry we are not past the terminal kind of thing yeah so right. in order to run this particular command in the background for this container it is running because there is an application running inside okay so that application will take care of running the particular command in the background means which means that your doc nginx service is running in the background means there is a command which is running in the background to start your nginx so that is running in the background but for this ubuntu container it is not running anything it needs a bash shell okay so in for those kind of things while creating a container we have to pass two options one is hyphen t hyphen i you can pass well 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 giving docker exe right i give hyphen ti so similar to that you can give hyphen ti while creating the container okay if the images are using a bash or any terminal we have to give that particular hyphen ti okay so now exit code is zero okay let us say you are completely new i want to see the logs of this container if it has generated any logs to understand this concept so now if i want to see the logs of a container docker logs or we can give docker container logs okay and the container name which container i want to give i want to give ubuntu you can see there are no container uh, logs actually okay which are stored in this container now i will not, I'm not able to understand this so so based on the things so you have to analyze the image you have to understand actually okay so you will get an experience on this no need to worry too much about it in getting this but as per my understanding you can understand this bash is nothing but a terminal okay so this image is designed in such a way that whenever this container is created using this image it is expecting a bash shell okay so where it is expecting a bash shell if you give only hyphen d it will it will create a container but this container cannot run in the background because you have not given hyphen ti a terminal to run this particular bash shell okay that's went that is where it went wrong so now what i can do i can just delete this because it is already stopped so i can delete this container directly it is stopped okay it is auto complete if you give a tab if you type the starting characters and if you give a tab docker will automatically complete that particular statement which is starting with that name okay so docker rm it is removed right now you can see here now let me try to recreate this using hyphen ti okay now your container is created see now it's running in the background okay so you can see now it's running in the background 
okay it doesn't have any application you already know right it is something like you created a ubuntu server that's it if you don't install any application you don't know to which port number you want to access there is no application running inside that particular container okay if you want to install some application let's see what are the challenges we have so let me try to first do a docker exec hyphen ti and the uh, container name ubuntu server i need a bash shell okay now you got it first thing is always i run update command for ubuntu operating system related container or virtual machine or bare metal or cloud whatever it is after this apt okay i want to install nginx package so install i want to install few packages nginx is one so i want to install see first i used nginx image to create a container so automatically no need to install nginx from my end that image itself will have this nginx package already installed i am just utilizing it and i am running my application okay here it is a ubuntu image from that i created a container so it doesn't have any application now i am trying to install inside the container okay that's a major difference what i am doing right now so that you guys can understand tomorrow when you get this kind of approaches actually okay and i want to install few packages ip route 2 and then ip utils hyphen ping okay. if you give hyphen y automatically it will accept and then it will install you can see it is installing a lot of dependency packages as well so it takes some time so totally you can see it is trying to install 15.9 mb space okay it will occupy that amount of space it all depends upon the size of the package so here it is asking me to select the here there is calcutta there is calcut calicut calicut okay 44 okay so it is installed okay. your ps command you can see there is no process running in the background okay how i can test my nginx service is running or not first curl 127.0.0.1 you can see curl is not available okay let me install oh i need to install this package also okay this is the problem actually like problem not it's not a problem it's a better practice so curl this minimum package are also not available which is not necessary right it's up to your requirement whether to install or not if we in productions we don't install these many packages actually we don't install ip commands ip packages nothing actually okay now Now, if I try to run this, you can see nothing is listening on 80 port number. It means that your Nginx package is installed, but there is no Nginx service running in the background. You can see here. It's not running. So, how to start Nginx service inside the container? Generally, if you want to start a service inside the virtual machine or a bare metal server or instance, how will you start? According to our discussion which we had, how will you start your service in Linux? CTL. System CTL, start, uh, status first you will check and you will verify your package service name and then you will verify, right? So that's how we generally do, right? So if I exit from this container, generally we give system CTL status docker. So this will tell me whether my service is running in the background or not. So it will use the respective uh, commands and all to run the background. That's okay. Now, here how i can do that so okay let me tell the system ctl status okay, sorry nginx right you don't have system ctl you don't have a kernel package right so obviously it will not install these unnecessary packages as well system ctl is not there so how will you start a services inside the container does anyone know about docker and know about this or Linux system administrators also. 
you might know right if you don't have system ctl process or something to run your service there could be some alternative right in it d slash in it d see in it d will be overridden by your system ctl in it d is something where a directory it will store all the process which need to be started okay that is taken care by your system ctl okay in init d also how will you start that's a problem yesterday if you remember i executed some command called sleep right so sleep is something a command which i can run but if i run that command directly it will run in the foreground means on the terminal itself i cannot execute any other command until that is completed so that's the reason what i have done yesterday i executed some command and i thrown in the background so inside this container also i can do the same thing let's say sleep uh, let's say 100 and then i can throw this particular command in the background so now there is a process running inside this particular thing you can see there is a sleep command which is running here okay that's fine that's okay for me right now okay but i want to start nginx service so how to do that so for nginx to start there is a command called nginx fng okay then you can give demon of so this is the command which i have to execute but when you execute this command it will not so i want to execute this command and throw it in the background so that my nginx service will get started now nginx service is started actually so if you open another terminal let me open another terminal okay to show the proof that your nginx service has started o dot okay now what is your second container ip address let's see obviously i know that it's uh, next ip address but let's cross it now will be 1.172.17.0.3 let's verify you can see it is 3 now let's take this ip address and let's run the curl it's working which means that it's working so now if i stop this now it's not running in the background okay i shown you the proof now if i run this particular command see what happens it's so it's proof saying that what are the command i executed it's correct to start your nginx service now the problem here is this is fine okay but the problem is i cannot exit from the container as well how okay so to this is now it's running in the background no nothing right so now what we can do i want to run this particular command in the background now you can see this particular nginx service has thrown in the background now if i try to run curl it works now i can exit from the container if you try to check your status it's running no issues at all you can see this particular command is still i was able to get fetch the data okay so manually you have to do this if you want to create a container and install nginx you have to do like this okay this is one thing you have to just remember keep it aside okay just try to recall whenever i ask something so try to recall it so the first thing is you have an existing nginx image if you directly pull it and use it no need to worry about installing nginx wherever it is running we are not worried whether it is running on ubuntu or whether it is running on debian whether it is running on centos or whether it is running right now we are not considered about it so nginx application is running it's fine i was able to access i can store my website related content in the varlib ww and i was able to access my website everything is fine that's one procedure if you don't want to use the nginx image which is referred i want to create my own nginx on ubuntu 20.04 due to some limitations so then you will take a image you will try to create a container you will install some packages since you don't know other methods right as of now so you will go log into the container you will install your application related packages and then you will run your container so run your application simple that is the second procedure what we have seen which is not recommended but it is a alternative way if you want to try okay so these are the two procedures where you can access your application and run okay any questions so this is the last topic that we want to discuss today
and tomorrow we will continue with the next topic so let me know any questions please yeah so today so yeah uh, i am very new to this line in router and all so this class seems to be but i mean the way you are explaining it should be for someone who already knows the topics and if you are just breezing through the first question, yeah, first question from my end so yeah first question from my end uh, don't think in a wrong way so did you install docker uh yes docker installation i have done docker installation is done i did not start uh -huh. running the command but docker installation is done my question is do we have this uh, documented somewhere in our uh, class in our, in our course is, documentation will be provided okay so yeah, before yeah, that yeah. watch a video and try to execute the command see until unless you practice from your end it looks like matrix that's it that is straight forward say even not me any trainer will tell the same thing or any person if you try to ask him, ask him he will just ask you to practice that's it if you don't practice yeah, you don't yeah. understand this terminology is simple yeah exactly okay. yeah see it is so, not about the person the person is new to this technology see always when i started my career in this i was not able to understand docker right it, once i executed some command understanding the behavior and all then it will register in my mind like how it is working what is that exactly and what we are intending what we are trying to do it's we are in the early stages of docker we are not even completed docker itself so we cannot make a decision that i am new to this particular technology i was not able to understand what command you are executing or i am completely new to this linux try to practice now no that's it right simple no, no. the moment i start no one minute the moment i start running the commands uh, uh, i lost somewhere that uh, what is the next command that i have run and uh, what was what that's is it, that's where we have to discuss yeah so that is where yeah. we have to discuss yes so, that is exactly. that's what i'm asking yeah. Yes. So today you practice, right? You you will fall into some errors. I'm saying like the flow. I'm saying try to understand this. Today I executed some commands. Okay. So you will be practicing today. For example, let's say you will be practicing. You will try to execute the same command, but in your case, all systems are not same, right? You might get fall into some error. Okay. That error is specific to your system. We cannot really expect that, and we cannot document it. Few cases. I'm not telling all the cases. Few cases we cannot document it. That's where you have to come back to me in the WhatsApp group. That's where I have created. Where on the day itself we can see the error. Always it is better to give a screenshot. So by looking at the error, I can tell you what is the reason for this failure and how to fix it. That for in that way you can document and you can understand. Those documentations are system specific. Other documents related to executing the command, which command I need to execute for creating container and all, I will give you the document. Okay, no need to worry about it. Okay. So today's class, whatever the commands were run, is that there in the GitHub location that you have given? No, GitHub it is not there. In GitHub, there are only scenarios, not related to this, especially for Docker. Okay. Okay. So what is happening is while the class is going on, we cannot take the notes or we cannot practice while the class is going on. So we are, I mean, I am. I cannot take it generally, but I. Uh, I'll have to replay all this one-hour video again, pause it at every section, and practice it. You have to, obviously. Obviously, right? So you have to practice. That's how you need to watch the video and practice. It's one-time practice, Correct. right? It's not a painful thing. I was, I was looking at some documentation where you said this command is for this. Uh, we have done See, this command today. Documents. This is how the documentation, right? This is what you are looking for, but. See, until unless you watch the video, you never know where to start. Okay, that's a problem. So that's the reason I clearly gave step one, step two, step three for this topic one. It is a topic zero one. This is topic zero two, where I executed this command. So you can just go through this particular commands. Okay, uh, you can see I here. I was right? asking for this only. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I was asking for this only. Okay. Okay. So if you want, you can just open these documents. But see, but the one thing. but you have to watch the video for one more time okay because there are few things you have to understand practically okay so i would recommend watch the video once again it is not a painful thing actually so you can watch the video practice the command see the document and just execute the command see whether you are getting the same output or not what i spoke is correct or not so it's that's how we have to verify
initially we have to do this exercise that is mandatory okay uh, can you share the documentation of this which, which you shared in the video in the whatsapp group also i mentioned the links it's only shared actually if you want you can go always you can go to the whatsapp description just open the whatsapp uh, right away go to the description and see there is a link github link Okay. You got it right? Yeah, I was joined in this group yesterday evening only. So I okay. Always okay. that's the reason. Yeah, new people will join it. Right? So for them, that's the reason I asked. Uh, I added in the description, WhatsApp description. You can go there always. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? No. Okay, thank you. Let me save this picture. Okay. I'll shut down this particular instance. See, I will keep it as it is. I'm not deleting these containers because I want to tell something. Okay. Thank you.